Welcome to Historically Drinking, where we explore the boozy side of the past. Be warned, this episode contains some information that may be disturbing. Three centuries before the Great London Plague outbreak, the Black Death made its first European landfall in the Italian town of Sicily. It was October of 1347, and the plague would make its way around Italy over the course of the next year, killing at least 25% of the population. And then it would return again and again for hundreds of years. This was a brand new horror for our Italians, and their reactions were often extreme. Groups of flagellants would form. They would wander the countryside, whips in hands. Each piece of their whip had a knot tied in it, and often these knots had a nail pushed through them. They would walk through towns, naked to the waist, beating themselves with their whips until their flesh was torn and bloody. Parents were known to abandon their sick children in fear that they themselves or their other children would also get sick and die. Other people gave themselves up to revelry, dancing and singing through the streets of their towns and cities, of course, becoming very inebriated while they did so. What were these plague revelers drinking? Well, it wasn't beer. During Roman times, Romans had encouraged grape growing for the production of wine over grain growing. Distillation was a thing at this point. It had been brought into Italy from the Middle East 300 years before and had already made its way all the way around Europe. Up in Ireland, beginnings of whiskey were being made. Over in Indonesia, rum was being made, but it was not in Europe. Vodka? We were nowhere close to that. Gin? Not yet. Tequila? It was more than a hundred years before Columbus would sail the ocean blue. All of the distillation that was happening in Italy wasn't being used to make fun drinks. It was being used to make medicines. So if the Italians weren't drinking beer and they weren't drinking booze, what were they drinking? Wine. Italy was the wine powerhouse of Europe. It would be many years before France would achieve its dominance. Viticulture, production, and aging methods had all been practiced and perfected during this time in Italy. Indeed, some of the varietals that they were growing then, we still drink now, such as Anglianico, Barbera, and Nebbiolo. These Italians, they were drinking their wine on its own, but it was also very, very common to mix it with other ingredients. This early form of mixology had been taking place since at least the beginning of recorded history. And now, with the spice trade bringing brand new things to mix in a hundred years earlier, there were some ingredients that had become quite popular to use in one particular drink called Hippocris. And these ingredients were cinnamon, ginger, cloves, and peppercorn. They would mix those with wine and either sugar or honey to sweeten it, and then drink it either hot or cold. This was such a winning combination that we still drink it today, only instead of Hippocris, we call it mulled wine. To make your own Hippocris, take a pot, put in a bottle of wine. I used Anglianico, as this was one of the varieties that was available in 1347, an ounce and a half of sugar, one finger of ginger peeled and sliced, four cloves, four black peppercorns, and four six sticks of cinnamon. Bring it all to a simmer, turn off the heat and let it cool. Once it's cooled, strain it through a fine strainer and then your Hippocris is ready to drink. If you want it hot, put it back on the stove and heat it up. If you want it cold, put it in the fridge and chill it down. And there you are. You too can drink like one of our plague revelers of 1347. Cheers. Oh, a word of warning. The first batch that I made, I foolishly used ground spices for, even though I knew better. Don't do this, it's disgusting. Mm. If you liked this video, please tell me, and also tell your friends. If you really liked this video, please leave this COVID laid off bartender a tip in Venmo. The recipe is below. You can find the references for this video on the companion blog post, which is on spiritanimalbeverage.com. 
Thank you. I hope to see you again next time.